Hi and welcome back to part 2 of the DX Commander Signature 9 build series. So in this video we're going to cut the radials, attach the connector and apply the heat shrink. We are also going to do the same for the driven elements, measuring and cutting them for 40, 30, 20, 17, 12 and 10 from the DX10 antenna wire that's supplied in the kit. We will also use the cutting chart that Callum has provided in his new unified manual which covers all of his current antenna models which you can purchase from his online shop. Now you may have noticed there is no element for 15 meters. Well that's because 15 meters also comes from the 40 meter element. Now check out Callum's video on his channel for more information on how this works. So let's start with the radials. I will make six bunches or four wires from the included radial wire roll. Now each radial will be around three meters long. So the first thing I need to do is gather the wire connectors from the supplied accessory bag along with the lengths of the glue lined heat shrink which we'll use to water seal the connector. First I'll cut a piece of the heat shrink, maybe two to three centimeters long. Now this should provide enough coverage over the connector and wire. And once I have four lengths of three meters of wire, I now have to strip back one end of each of the cables. Having a tool like this makes things so much easier, especially when you're doing a lot of them. And once stripped, we can twist them together like this, then pull off the covering off the ends to expose the wire. Twist them up as small as possible, slide over a piece of heat shrink, and then insert the twisted wire into one of the connectors. You can get a special tool for crimping these, but I just use a pair of pliers which seem to hold them in place. I'll now solder these to make the perfect connection. Now I use my soldering iron quite hot, so the solder melts faster, but it's entirely up to you. I'm also using very thin solder, but thicker solder would probably be more suitable and quicker. Now once soldered, you can trim off any extra wire that's protruding through the fork connector. So now it's time to slide up the heat shrink and get it watertight. Now I found this a little tough to do as the wire was still hot, so the adhesive within the heat shrink started to stick before I could fully push up the heat shrink up to the connector. Maybe wait till it cools down a little in the future. Now once in place, it should provide a solid watertight fitting that should last many years. I then went on to replicate this another five times so that I ended up with six bunches of four wires. This should be enough for a modest ground radial system. Of course, if you have more wire or want longer lengths, then feel free to cut them as required. Again, Callum has some great videos covering ground radial systems and definitely worth a watch. So on to making the elements. Now to make things nice and easy once we get outside to install the elements, I've used a little label printer with a label for each band. Now I know others have used similar solutions including colour coded electrical tape or bracelet trinkets that spell the band. However, I chose to use this little label printer as it was to hand and quite convenient to use. Now using the DX10 wire, I cut my first element which is the 40 meter element. According to Callum's cut chart, this needs to be 11 meters and 55 centimeters long. As the same as the radial, we need to trim back part of the DX10 outer coating. Now I use my cable strippers for this to make it easy. We also need a little heat shrink so that it can provide a nice waterproof connection. You'll notice we use the same type of connectors we use for the radials. Now once trimmed, place a small piece of the heat shrink over the wire and then insert the wire into the connector. Using some pliers, I then crimp down on the back to keep the wire in place. Now I chose to solder these connectors as I did with the ground radial wires as it provides a nice connection. Now once soldered, slide up the heat shrink and heat it up to get that nice tight bond. Now I didn't have my heat gun to hand so I just used the outer of my soldering iron. Now if you use this method, just be careful not to touch anything with the tip especially your fingers. Oh, there we go, that's job done. Although there's one last item to fit and that's the label I printed off earlier. Fitting it a few inches above the connector like so 
will make it easy to read once the element has been fitted to the driven plate. More on how to do this later. Now lastly, we need to make the foldback. As stated in Callum's user guide, now the 40 meter element doesn't require a foldback as it already comes back down the pole, but the other bands do. So just keep an eye on the cut chart for which lengths to make the foldback. Now this will be used as a hook hole where you attach shock cord to keep the element tight. And it will also be used for tuning. Using electrical tape first off allows you to change the foldback length for tuning. Once you have your perfect tune for that band, it's recommended to use some of the glue lined heat shrink for a permanent installation. With all the elements made, it's now time to prepare the ground plate. This is where the SO239 socket attaches and the ground radial connectors that we made earlier. If you didn't realize the SO239 is where you attach your PL259 that's on the end of your coax, which goes off to your radio or receiver. I'll attach the ground radials properly when we go outside. Fitting the SO239 is fairly straightforward with only one nut that can be tightened using a spanner or adjustable spanner if you have one. The ground plate will also require six bolts to be screwed into it. Now each of these six holes are threaded, so using a small spanner will help to get those bolts tight and snug onto the aluminium plate. Between the washer and the wing nut is where we will install the ground radio connector later in the build. Now we now need to do the same for the driven plate. This is the plate in which all of the driven elements attach to. As per the ground plate, simply attach the bolts through the threaded holes. You notice that there is one hole which has a smaller distance between another two holes. Now this is where the connector from the center of the SO239 will connect to. If you're wondering why there is a large hole in the middle of the plates, this is where the base of the telescopic pole fits through. In part three of this video series, we'll be attaching the plates, spreaders and wire elements to the pole. Now remember to be subscribed so you're notified of when I release part three. Stay safe, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.